chapter, right? So um, it took until the Renaissance to figure out how to fix everything. Does anybody know who came along and brought back the idea that the sun was in the center of everything? Who's famous for giving us the modern heliocentric model? Does anybody know? It starts with a C. I'll give you that hint. You may have learned about this guy in school. And then as you guys are doing it, I'm going to bring up a picture of him. <laughs> oh, somebody commented that the uh, the ancient Greeks dropped the ball. That That's a good one. I'm going to steal that one and use that one in future semesters. Yes. So who came along in the Renaissance to to start bringing the sun back into the picture? That was Copernicus. Okay. And here's a picture of him right here. Just really rocking, you know, this, this hairdo right here. Copernicus. Um, and in case you can't read that, that's uh, C-O-P-E-R-N-I-C-U-S. Um, but actually, if you know anything about history, um, spelling was not set in stone back then. So he actually spelled his name a bunch of different ways throughout his life. Um, but Copernicus is what we usually go with at this point. Um, yeah. So, this was the Renaissance. Um, in order to be a scientist at this point in history, you pretty much had to be a rich person. Okay? You pretty much had to be a rich person. Um... Because, you know, science didn't pay very well, usually. Unless you could get, like, a wealthy donor to support you. Um, so most of the scientists were talking... Today, that's not the case. Anybody, no matter how poor, can eventually become a scientist. Uh, well, okay, probably not anybody. But most people can do it, right? Uh, so this was a very rich guy right here. And he spent a lot of his time reading about astronomy and researching these problems. And he didn't like that the most accurate star charts were leading to this giant, ugly, messed up system of geocentric circles on circles on circles. Um, and he realized, here we go, that you could explain retrograde motion. You could explain why the planets go backwards sometimes in a much simpler way by just putting the sun in the center. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Columbus was also a rich guy, but this guy, uh, not a moron like uh, Christopher Columbus. Okay. So this guy, this guy had a, a better head on his shoulder than Columbus did. So check this out. Um, here we go. So let's put the sun in the center, just like uh, Copernicus thought, and see how that fixes the problem. So let's pop the sun there. Oh, great. Got to restart. Restart. Please stop talking. Not you guys. I'm talking to my computer. Go away. One second. Technical difficulties. Control, Alt, Delete. There we go. Good old Control, Alt, Delete works every time. There we go. Okay, so we're back. Sorry about that. So check this out. So Copernicus put the sun in the center of everything. So let's put a big S on that. Um, and if he's putting the sun in the center, that means where is the earth? If the sun is in the center, where's the earth going to be? Here we go. Oh, looks like I have a little bit of a delay. I'll just go ahead and move on. The Earth has to be orbiting around the sun, right? It's got to be orbiting around the sun. If it's not in the center, then the Earth's got to be orbiting around. So here's the Earth. And uh, the rest of the planets were orbiting around the sun also. Some of them were closer to the sun than us, specifically Mercury and Venus, and then Mars and a few of the other planets 
were farther out. Okay? So every planet had its own orbit around the sun. The only thing that uh, he had orbiting around the Earth was the moon, okay? Which is correct. Um, now, a couple of important things here. These orbits, in spite of my terrible drawing, uh, Copernicus thought these orbits were perfect circles based on observations of the planets, okay? He thought that these orbits were shaped like perfect circles and that the sun was 100% exactly at the exact center of these orbits, okay? Now, check this out. This means, and this is the important part, this is the important part. He figured out that these planets and the Earth um, were all moving at different speeds, okay? They don't have to move at the same speed. Oh, somebody's asking if the planets were named by them. They were named. Um, so there was Mercury and Venus and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn. They didn't know about Uranus and Neptune yet. Uh, Uranus wasn't discovered until telescopes. Th those two you can't see with the naked eye. So it took a much longer time to figure out that they existed. Um, but they did have the right names. It's just that even in Copernicus's time, we people still thought that they were weird stars. They had the names Mercury and Venus, but they thought that they were strange stars. So even Copernicus didn't know that these other planets were places like Earth. He thought they were just weird stars that orbited the sun. Okay, So he's still not 100% right, but this is a lot more right uh, than, uh, than the people before him. Right Now check this out. How does this explain why planets look like they go backwards sometimes? So here's my first question on that. Do planets actually go backwards? Like do they actually go backwards around the sun? No. No, they don't. So what Copernicus figured out is that retrograde motion is an optical illusion that comes from the fact that Earth is moving, okay? Um, let me explain it when it comes to Mars. It's the easiest one for me to explain, okay? Here's what Copernicus thought. Let me, let's not think about the plants for a second. Let's use a metaphor. Let's think about this. I assume that you have driven on the highway or at least been in a car that was driving on the highway at some point. And the reason I'm talking about highways and not regular streets is that highways have multiple lanes and um, not every lane goes the same speed, right? Not every lane goes the same speed. We have what we call the fast lane and the slow lane, right? Where is the slow lane? Where's the slow lane on the highway? Where you, where, if you're going to be moving slow, where should you be on the highway? On the right. And if you're going fast, you should be on the left. Do people actually do that? No, it's chaos out there. And also, you know, while we're at it, let's assume that everybody on our side of the highway is going forward. Okay, let's assume everybody's going forward. Have you ever been on the highway when somebody came the wrong direction, like on the actual highway? Have you ever seen somebody going the wrong direction on the highway? That happened to me one time. I was, I, I mean, I, I didn't drive the wrong way on the highway. I was driving along and somebody was coming the other way on the highway. That was one of the most terrifying things I have ever seen. Um, if you've never seen it, you don't want to see it. Um, cause it's like, oh no, this is, this is not like you see it and you're like, oh no, someone's going to die today. That's, that's, that's what's going to happen in that situation. Anyway, for this metaphor, let's assume that's not happening and everybody's going forward. Okay. So everybody's going forward on the highway. Okay. Let's say that you are in the fast lane. Okay. So this is this right here. This is you. Okay. This is you. Actually, let me. Let me make myself big on here. This is you, okay? And this is somebody in the slow lane, okay? So you're moving forward, 
And let's say the person in the slow lane is ahead of you. You're both moving forward, but if you're moving faster than them, what will you eventually do? If this person's moving slow and you're moving fast, what will eventually happen if you're in different lanes? You're going to pass them, right? Even though you're both going forward, eventually you're going to pass them, okay? Yes. And here's the thing. If you're coming up behind a slow car, you can see that they're going forward. But while you are passing a car, while you are passing a slower car, what does it look like they're, which way does it look like they're going when you're passing them? When you're passing that car, which way does it look like they're going? Like if you come along, if I'm going to pass Copernicus here, it looks like they go backwards while you're passing them. And then if, once you get far enough ahead, you can see that they're coming forwards again. You know they're not actually going backwards. They just look like they're going backwards, right? So, what am I getting at here? Let's see if we can figure this out. Here's a hint. We, on the Earth, are orbiting around the Sun faster than Mars is. We're both going the same direction, but Earth moves faster than Mars. So what does that mean? That means every once in a while, what will Earth do? What will Earth do every once in a while in this system? What happens every once in a while? Yeah, we pass Mars every once in a while. We pass Mars every once in a while. And based on what we've just been saying, what's, gonna, what's it going to look like Mars is doing when we're passing it? When we pass Mars, what's Mars going to look like it's doing? I think you guys are getting it. It's going to look like it moves backwards. It's going to look like it moves in reverse. So, retrograde motion is just us passing planets, okay? As we all go around the sun in one direction, whenever we pass a planet, it, it has retrograde motion, which is just an optical illusion making it look like it went backwards during the pass, okay? So, yeah. And he is able to explain that without making the system any more complicated. So we can just have this. So that's a much more simple explanation than adding a whole bunch of junk to your system to make it so the planets could go backwards.